Uh, ako si Ana Felicia C. Sanchez. Ana. Um, ako ay associate dito sa AUP Institute of Creative Writing. Ngayong taon lang, nagsimula lang ako nitong Enero. Yung libro as a whole ay chronicle, uh, fictional chronicle, no? ng uh, uh, pagiging babae at pagiging ina. Uh, so, it's a, over a span of years. No? Uh, although yung specific na babasahin ko mamaya ay uh, base sa uh, personal na karanasan na pagiging ina ng batang may disability. Um, so, yun yung uh, particular na pinanggagalingan nung akdang yun. Mm-hmm. Collection siya ng short stories. Uh, ang pinakagusto ko actually ay hindi yung babasahin ko mamaya kasi yung mamaya medyo uh, mabig- mabigat o dumaikli lang. Ang pinakapaborito ko dyan, mabigat din siya, pero um, base kasi siya sa paglalaro ng Sega Genesis. Uh, so, meron na ano, in particular, yung Yu Hakusho. Ayun. So, yun yung pinakagusto ko dahil nga um, nagawa kong gamitin dun sa kwento yung mga anime references sa yung game. Ganyan. So, so, yun yung parang masaya. Tapos kahit malungkot siyang kwento, masaya pa rin ako pagkatapos. So, lagi ko sinasabi sa mga tao na, uy, bas- at basahin mo tong kwento, ang saya niyan. Tapos, syempre, malulungkot sila. Pero yun, pero masaya siya para sa akin. Uh, sa tingin ko, um, well, malay kong ginawa ng espasyo ang karanasan uh, ng pagiging ina. Kaya rin yung titulo ng koleksyon ng mga akda ay How to Pacify the Strut Infant. Um, ina at babae. Ayun. So, uh, deliberate siyang uh, pagbibigay ng, uh, ng, ng titulo. No? Um, tapos, sa tingin ko, ito ay parang tulay na rin patungo dun sa mga susunod kong akda na non-fiction naman. So, uh, tapos yun nga, tungkol specifically sa pag pagiging magulang no, ng isang batang may disability. Uh, so, yun yung sa tingin ko um, ginagawa ko at contribute ko sa panitikang Pilipino. Spend little girl looking like nothing's wrong until you stared a bit more than you should, which Beth did when she heard a kid talk. Want Barbie, the kid said. Language impairment, thought Beth, tugging at the blouse of the woman whose phone rested against her cheek. And because Beth stared a bit more than she should have, the woman stared back at her a bit more than she should have. So that when the woman lowered her phone, Beth's face heated up because by returning her stare, the woman burned a memory of her face into Beth's head. Although to start with, she had known that look well, having used it many times before on others. And thus she found herself trailing after her and the little girl at a distance she deemed safe, all through lunch at the food court into a movie house where the kid erupted in tears after the lights dimmed out. Sensory processing disorder, thought Beth, knocking down a tumbler of popcorn onto the floor where it rolled down the steps and almost tripped the usher flashing his flashlight around and whose shoes in the dark crushed the popcorn in new and crunchy ways. A 15-minute scene filled with crunching and crying and annoying light flashing, punctuating the exchange between usher and the woman in the angry whispering from the audience. Kids like that should just stay at home. And the politeness in the man's voice tore Beth to pieces so when finally the woman and her daughter agreed to leave the premises, Beth stomped on some popcorn and ground them deep into the carpet as she counted to 20 and stole out after them. 200 peso movie ticket be damned. And out past the cinema lobby to an ice cream stall where everything became all right with a strawberry ice cream cone. And Beth made a little gasp because that's her daughter's favorite too, the routine of ice cream. In fact, they'd buy a cone or two at a nearby convenience store after every therapy session. How slow going the progress, but ice cream helps. And so do days like this, when someone else takes care of the child and Beth can hide from the confusing diagnoses and abandoned dreams and the fear of the future and the fear of people. A day like this when instead of feeling cornered and alone, she haunts the grass and jungle foliage to her heart's content until she misses her cub and the need to hug her again drives her home. She thought of lionesses as she followed a woman and her kid all through the mall until the little girl finished her ice cream and the woman wiped her hands with a bunch of baby wipes which she then stuffed into her purse because the nearest trash can was 20 feet too far back. And they were probably tired of walking because Beth was, though exhaustion had been a vault state for years. And yet on and on and on they walked until they reached the bookstore, falling to the floor in the children's section here, eight shelves away, now seven, now six, five, four, three. 
The woman stores the phone in her purse. Now there is no jungle foliage in which to hide. The child is giggling, clapping her hands at the picture books, and the woman is laughing too. Two, one. One hand resting protectively on her young, defensive of course. The woman looks up at Beth. Hi, says Beth. My kid loves books too.